I made a video where I calculated the magnetic field due to a long wire, and I did it two ways. I did it uh, by breaking this into infinitely number of pieces and integrating, and then I did it numerically by breaking it into a finite number of pieces. I want to use that program to make a visualization of the magnetic field all around the wire. And I actually showed that program, uh, but I'm going to remake it. I showed that in the, in the previous video, and, if, and I'll put a link to that video down below. So let's just briefly go over how you calculate the magnetic field due to wire, and then we'll use that program to make a visual model. And that's what's really so powerful about WebVPython is that you can make these visual models. And in particular, this is a problem because we have this cross product in here. So we have uh, you know, three vectors that are in different directions, I, delta L, R, and B. They're all in different directions, so it's a 3D problem. It's hard to draw on paper, but in Python it works really well. So this is the magnetic field. This is uh, essentially the, the law of Beal and Savar, the magnetic field due to a short wire. Uh, and if I just have a little piece of this wire, I need. there's a couple things I need. I need the vector of the piece the vector of the observation location, and then I can find this vector from the piece to the observation location, and then I can use that to calculate the magnetic field, uh, the vector value. And then to find the total, I just add up all the pieces. Uh, and then the result was that the magnetic field due to a wire was this, approximately the magnitude, and that's, that's what we get. Okay, so let's just jump over to Python and start building this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my previous code, like I said before, and we're gonna modify it. We're going to modify it so that we can make a visual model. So let's just run this way the way we have it right now. The only thing that's modeled so far is the rod right there. Now, I actually want to do one thing. I, I want to draw three vectors, and then we'll make a visual for the whole thing. Three vectors, and the vectors are going to be I DL, I delta L, R, and B. So we can see how those things relate. So let's just add those in there. I'm going to put them down at the end. Let's first make, uh, I'm going to call this IDL arrow. And it's going to be, it's, this one's hard because it's going to be on the sphere, but I'm going to try putting it on the sphere, I mean on the cylinder. Let's just say it's at uh, the vector 0, 0, 0. If we need to move it, we will. Uh, the axis is going to be equal to, let's just try, let's just try uh, I times DL. That is a vector, right? And let's give it a color of color equals color dot red. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, you can't see it at all. Um, let's just let's just see if I make that. Oh, that's why. Can't find the var variable pos. Oh, p that's why it didn't work. Okay. Some things just break. That's fine. And again, I broke it assigning an R value. What's the way? Assigning an R value. Well, let's see if I didn't have this in there at all. Oh, <laughs> I'm just excited. That's my problem. Okay, so there is the arrow right there. You can see it zoomed in. It's not very visible. Um, I could, let's just try making it a little bit bigger. Let's try making it three times bigger and see if I, I don't want to move it, but let's see if I do. Okay, that's good. Let's make it two times bigger. That's fine, that works. Okay, so two times bigger, there's my I arrow. Now I have my observation location, RO. It's just a vector. So let's, let's just put a, a vector from R, from the, from the charge, from IDL to RO. So I'm gonna call that R arrow, and it's an arrow. Its position is the vector zero, zero, zero. And then its axis is gonna be RO, RO minus the vector R zero, zero, which is zero. And let's make that one yellow. That one worked, okay. So there's my I delta L, there's my R, and now we just need to find a, the magnetic field. Um, let's just do that, B arrow. What's that? I don't want that. Uh, B arrow. Arrow position equals observation location. I'm gonna put the arrow there. Uh, the axis is gonna be equal to, uh, I can't do B, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do B scale times B, and then, sorry, calculated that vector. And then the color is color.cyan. 
and I don't have B scale, so let's just put B scale equals one, BS uh, for right now, and then we'll have to change that. So the, the problem with the magnetic field vector is that uh, I'm trying to display something that, that is not the right size. So you see here that I have the, the magnitudes 10 to the negative six. So if I want it to be a meter long, I'd have to scale it up by 10 to the sixth. So let's scale it up by 10 to the fifth and let's just see what that looks like. So I'm gonna put B scales one E five. I'm gonna run it again. And there, okay, so I'm happy. So now we see what that looks like, right? So here's my IDL, there's R and there's B. And then this is the right hand rule so that IDL cross R is in the direction of B using the right hand rule. Okay, so that's kind of useful. And this is what's great about WebVPython is you can rotate that around, it wasn't too hard. I'm gonna delete those. I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna make a whole bunch of vectors. So I wanna have a bunch of magnetic field vectors around here. Um, in order to do that, I need to make a function that just calculates the magnetic field at any location instead of just that one location. So let's get rid of these arrows because I don't really want those um, in here. And let's look at the code that we have so far. I have K, that's my mu naught over four pi, I, L, X, that's all fine. Uh, RO is my observation location, I wanna move that. Uh, N is the number of pieces I have broken my wire into, then that's my R, my vector, that's the location of the first piece, that's the magnetic field. And so I go through in this loop, and I this loop does two things. It makes the cylinder, and then it calculates the magnetic field. I wanna break that into two separate parts. I wanna just make the cylinder, and then calculate the magnetic field later. So um, to do that, let's make a function. Uh, let's get rid of this stuff. I'm gonna leave that in there, the cylinder. Um, let's see, wait, don't wanna leave that. The cylinder, just make that. I, and this is, we can leave it in there and it's fine. I don't even need that. I, I don't even need DB. I can, uh, let's actually cut that uh, and then do this and that's just gonna make the cylinder. Now I want to uh, make the magnetic field function. So let's call this uh, def B R O T. So I wanna give it an observation location that T stands for temporary, and then it's gonna return the magnetic field at that location due to that thing. So I have the, already have the cylinder. Uh, so to do this, I need to start back and re think about all those pieces. So I'm gonna redo this part where RQ is equal to vector negative zero, negative L over two. That's a question mark, L over two, zero, right? And I need to move up. I need to recreate all those pieces. I'm not gonna draw them, I'm just gonna recreate them. Um, and I need to start with a vector zero, zero, zero for the total magnetic field because I'm gonna add up the piece due to each one. So I don't need that right there. Actually, I don't wanna do that because I now have B. Uh, that RQ is there still to make this loop. Now I'm just gonna do like I did before, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it in my, my function. While RQ dot Y is less than L over two. Uh, I don't need to remake the cylinder, I do need to calculate R though. R equals R O T minus R Q. And then I need to calculate the magnetic field due to that little piece, D B, oh I already I had that in here, V. There it is. And then this is gonna be changed. That's gonna be BT, 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 and this is RO, no, that's fine. It's exactly like that. So that calculates the magnetic field of that piece, adds it to the total, and then I need to move my RQ. So RQ equals RQ plus DL. That's gonna move up to the next piece. And then I want to return uh, BT. And so down here, let's just, let's just see if this works. Right, I'm gonna put in uh, B of R O. And that should give me the same answer, it should still work. Let's see if it works. And all I'll do is make a function for the magnetic field. And it didn't. Can't find the variable Y. Can't find the variable Y. B, Y. Oh, dot. It's just a typo. 
Can't find the variable dbt. Okay, that's because it's not dbt, it's just db. I know where that error is. B, this is right here. Okay. It's okay to make errors. You just gotta fix them. Okay, so that's the same answer I got before. So my function works. So now what I wanna do is to think about how do I move around. So let's start at the bottom down here of this wire and, and draw a magnetic field and rotate around there and draw an arrow for the magnetic field at all those locations. So to do that, I need to find out what those locations are and how do I move them. So I already have my function right there. I don't really need this stuff down here. I'm just gonna put that. So let's, let's put um, a couple things. R, capital R is 0 0.1, theta equals zero, D theta equals, I wanna do eight arrows around there. So let's say that'd be two times pi divided by eight. So that's gonna, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is use r and theta to find the vector location and then change my value of theta, change my value of theta. I'm moving my r, my r observation location around um, until I get around and I'm gonna plot the electric field at each one of those points. Okay, so I have theta, I have d theta, I have r. Uh, let's just say that uh, while theta is less than two times pi, so all the way around. Um, what I wanna do is number one, calculate RO. So RO is gonna be uh, vector R times cosine theta. Written, the, my rod's in the Y axis, so I'm gonna move around in the, uh, the R, the X, Z plane. My Y value, I want it to be at the bottom of the thing, so my Y value is gonna be negative L over two. And then my z value will be r times sine of theta. So now that I have that observation location, I can calculate the magnetic field and I can put an arrow there. And I don't even need to calculate the magnetic field. I can just make an arrow. I don't need to give it a name because I'm just gonna draw it. So I'm gonna say arrow position equals ro, axis equals uh, bs times bro, right? Bro is my function that calculates the strength of the magnetic field. I need to re-put BS up here. So let's do BS equals one times 10 to the fifth. That's what I had before. Uh, and then I need a color, color, and this, I like yellow. Color equals color dot yellow. You can change the color. Now what I need to do is to move my angle of theta or it'll never end in order to stay in the same spot. So theta equals theta plus D theta. Let's see if this works. You never know. It worked. Okay, so there you go. Pretty happy with that. There's my magnetic field down there. Um, I'm, I think that the arrow's a little bit big, but let's just see, we can always change the, the B scale later. Uh, that's that. Okay, I actually wanna make two rings. I wanna make a ring at R equals 0.1 and one a little bit further away. Uh, so let's just redo the same thing and let's just change the value of R. So I'm just gonna copy all of this. I don't need B scale, let's put that up here. Let's just copy all of this and do it again. And yeah, there's other ways to do this, but you know, we're just trying to get a visual here. We're not trying to you know, prove anything. I'm just gonna change R to point two and then rerun it and it should be fine. Let's just see if that, that works. I have that code in there twice. Okay, so there I have my magnetic field uh, closer and further away. I'm pretty happy with that. And you can rotate this around and see what that looks like. Now what I wanna do is to move this and repeat that process at different Y values, okay? So I need a DY value. I'm gonna say DY is L over five. I'm just picking something. So let's go up here and say DY is L over five. And what I wanna do is repeat all this for different values of L, for Y. So I need another loop. So let's put my loop right here while, uh, let's say Y, equals negative L over two, that's my starting location. And then while L is less than or equal to L over, a positive L over two, less than or equal to L over two, then do the following. And everything down there, I'm going to uh, repeat. So every time I repeat it, I need to reset the, I need to do the same stuff. So I'm just gonna indent all this stuff. In WebVPython, you can highlight it and then press tab and it indents the whole thing. 
Um, now down here, I do need to change this to Y, right? Because that's going to change and this to Y. And then down at the end, I need to increase my, oh, that didn't indent. I need to increase my value of y, so I can just put y equals y plus dy, and they'll move up and repeat it. And I think that should work. Let's see. Okay, it it worked, but my, my scale's too large. I don't like the way it looks, so let's make that half as big. So I'm gonna make this, uh, let's just put this as uh, 0.5e5. Okay, I like that. There you go. That's the magnetic field at a bunch of different locations due to a long wire. And we made that. And, and you know, this is important because you can't draw this on paper, right? You And making it, I think, helps understand the physics too. But at the very least, I use this stuff when I talk about the magnetic field. And so I can use this in class. I can use this in a blog post. Uh, I can rotate around and all that stuff. So that it's, it's really useful. And if you just want the code so you can move stuff around, that's cool too. But... There you go. That's the magnetic field, the visualization of the magnetic field due to a long wire. Very useful, very helpful for me. Because it's easier to make this program than it is to draw it, I think. Code down below, link to the other magnetic field calculation down below. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.